Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the Guitar Dungeon. And today, I'm playing around with a Donner Circle Looper. So stick around. So if you're into guitar, you've probably heard of a loop pedal and uh, it allows you to play a riff or a chord progression on your guitar or sing a beatbox or whatever, strum out a rhythm, record it, it loops, continuous loop, uh, plays it over and over again so you can play over top of yourself, basically backing yourself up and... Uh, this one here is made by Donner, which is sort of a, uh, I don't know, they primarily all their stuff is from China, but then again, what <laughs> music equipment isn't? There's a lot of it that comes from China. Uh, not that that's a bad thing necessarily, but uh, this is a looper, a uh, single track looper. It also has a drum uh, machine in it, drum patterns, and you can start and stop everything you can run the looper and the drum patterns independently of each other but they don't sync so i don't i don't quite understand that so there's this merge button in the middle and you press that and then it synchronizes the drums and the loop but then you can't stop the loop without stopping the drums so if you want to run the the rhythm to back you up and you play a riff play it back, do a little solo, and then you want to stop the riff to continue playing, but you also want the drums to continue. It doesn't do it. So that's kind of a huge drawback for me. Uh, other than that, it's it's great. It's got, uh, I think, 40 memory slots. Uh, you can set, and, and each memory slot you're on, if you record a loop, it saves it. You don't have to hold a button down to save it automatically does it but then you have to remember if you want to keep that loop you have to advance to the next memory slot in order to record something new to maintain that because if you record something new it'll what it'll go over top of it so that's kind of i don't know it's a stereo stereo input output you can run the left and right channels independently of each other um I'm not sure if that matters because uh, it doesn't. There's no way to separate the two. It's not a two-channel or two-track looper. It's stereo, but it's it's fixed. So uh, I don't know why the input is left and right because I don't know. Maybe for a synthesizer or something with a stereo input, then you do then your output is in stereo. Uh, you can fade out the loop uh, instead of stopping and you know when you hit stop it'll it'll fade out instead of stop instantly there's tap tempo so you can set your tempo uh, and then you can in independently control the volume of the rhythm and the loop so that's that's kind of cool that's that's kind of key uh, to being able to do anything with a looper so let's test it out okay I've got the pedal all set up I've got it running into a warm audio, warm drive distortion pedal. Uh, if you haven't checked out one of those, do yourself a favor, they're a really good pedal. And so I got it plugged into, uh, does, did, it did not come with a power cord. You need to get a power cord. It's just a nine volts to cord like you'd use for any uh, guitar pedal. And so I've got a power cord that has multiple outputs on it. So I got them both plugged in. And uh, I've got this one set up to memory three. You control the memory uh, with this dial here. These buttons are, these knobs are actually also buttons. So you can control each section, the level. And then as I mentioned earlier, fade out and you can adjust your fade level. How many seconds of fade it takes to fade out. 
And then on this side, your drum section, you've got select volume beats per minute. Let me try this other hand here. <laughs> and okay, so there, oops, there's your volume beats per minute. And that is controlled by, well, you can either dial it in with the knob or use this as tap tempo. Okay. And then here is record dub, stop, play, and clear if you hold it. And then this is the button I was talking about. This is the magic button that synchronizes the looper and the drum patterns. Now, I don't know. <laughs> it would be a great button. It would be so much more functional if if you could still stay synchronized even if you didn't merge the two. For instance, if if you click the merge, it would just start and stop the drums when you record or play back the loop. And then if you weren't synchronized, then the drums, you could start and stop independently, but then when you created your loop, it would still stay in sync. There's There should be an internal clock in there that the, and then when you stop the loop, the drums would keep going. That's, that's the way I think it should function, but it's not my pedal. I didn't design it. So anyway, let's, uh, let's give it a test run. So we will merge these two together. We'll stay in uh, tap tempo mode. And then you can uh, control the, the buttons, the knob buttons, knob slash button with your foot also. So I'll tap tempo. Let's see what we'll, we'll, what we'll do. There you go, 166. Okay, so then you need to be over here in the memory mode. There we go. In the mem and I don't know why we're at 37, but there we go. Back to three. Okay, so now we're ready to record. And when you hit record, it'll count you in with a stick tap. And uh, I think right now, and this is select, is how you select the drum kit you want. So I'm on rock one. Four four time. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what we're gonna play. Just... Probably just something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm making this up as I go. Two, three. What now? Why did? That's not the tap tempo I put in there. And the reason is, is I switched the memory knob. So, and I don't know why it bounced me to memory, whatever that was. Probably because I hit the knob, the knob with my foot. So now I can do tap tempo, I believe. Okay, close enough. And we go back to memory. And now it should be the correct tempo. Two, three, four. <laughs> soul over top of it. Oh, it's recording. <laughs> okay. And it's fading out too, so because we, we adjusted the fade. So if you don't keep the fade on zero seconds, it'll automatically fade out. So let's go back. We'll adjust the fade to zero. Back to our memory. We'll hold this down to delete what we played. And what I did is I'm used to loopers where you hit the pedal to record, you record, and then you hit it again to play back. Well, this one is record dub, 
on the one uh, button, record dub, and play stop on the other. So that's the one thing if you're used to loopers where you record, hit the same button again and it plays back. And then if you want to dub, you hit that one again. This one's not like that. So let's uh, let's try this again. Three, four. There we go. So now if you want to dub, come back over here and we'll do some... That sounded terrible, but... <laughs> I'm playing the Firefly uh, F338 or something. I don't know, this is a Les Paul, or not a Les Paul, but a, a Gibson 338. I don't know my numbers anyway. Okay, and then you hit stop and it stops instantaneously. So let me show you what happens if, <laughs> if you turn off the uh, magic green button. So we'll clear this out. We'll stop, uh, took it off that button. So now you can, uh, well you gotta be in drums in order to start and stop them. So that starts and stops the drums right away. Okay. And then I think you have to be in memory mode over here to start a loop. Okay, so let's see what happens. That's kind of quiet. There we go. Ha <laughs> I hit the button. The knob's pretty touchy. Okay, here we go. You know, here, see it's going out of sync already. <laughs> can control the drums. Independently of the music, but they're not in sync. So it's almost pointless. Uh, it doesn't make any sense why you would... Yeah, I don't know. Now you can, con you can connect an external pedal so you can start and stop things with an external pedal, but I don't know if that gives you the ability to start and stop the drums independently of the loop and have everything stay in sync. I think that magic green button is what keeps everything synchronized. So I guess if you're doing just regular loops, if you're doing a loop, song that you know repeats and you never have to stop the music or if you see so you can't synchronize it to a MIDI source either so you can't use an external drums so I don't know I'm a little perplexed at the way this thing is designed so let's try something else
I like that. That's cool. Now it's quiet. Okay, let's try recording. Oh, I'm gonna be back to memory. I think having drums and a backing track instantly makes your guitar playing sound so much better. So anyway, this is the Donner Circle Looper. And uh, it's not bad that, I gotta say, the drum patterns in it are phenomenal. So if you wanted to use it just for drum backing, or if you're just noodling around or practicing, then you can create those sort of chord progression backing tracks for it works pretty great as far as using it as a looper for any dynamic songs complicated songs it's not going to work out real well you're going to have to use a song that definitely has a repeating chord progression in it in order to use this looper effectively i uh, like how it counts you in that's that's a great feature but man if you could somehow separate that guitar you know the the loop from the drums and have them stay in sync so you can start and stop the loop independently of the drums, then this thing would be excellent. So anyway, there it is. Check it out, and uh, we'll see you next time here on the Guitar Dungeon. Thanks for watching.